So I've been waiting a few weeks on this product. Uh, I have the VNA uh, Nano or the Nano VNA. Uh, it is a vector network analyzer. So pretty much the cool thing about this device is first it's cheap, $50 because it's open source and different manufacturers can get a hold of the hardware and the tools to make this and uh, they can sell it online. So it'll actually measure uh, antennas, uh, the frequencies they're resonant at, the SWR, VWSR on those frequencies, and it has a touchscreen and a built-in battery. For $50 in, as an accurate tool, which it has been tested, uh, there has been some studies on it and it, it looks like it's good to go, that is an amazing price. So I'm really excited to pop this thing open, I don't have a VNA uh, yet, so I'm really excited to start screwing some antennas on there and see what I see. So let's go ahead and open up the package and see what came with it. So it came USPS, so I'm gonna go ahead and crack this envelope open here. See what came with it. Now this right here was actually $45. So I got the $45 version on eBay. And it looks like it came with a neat little case. There is some more plastic to kind of rip off here. So let's get this off. So here's the box. Uh, let's see, Nano VNA, very tiny handheld vector network analyzer, the frequency range. Okay, so uh, a little stipulation here. The range is 50 uh, kilo, kilohertz to 30 or 300 megahertz uh, that is accurate at. But you can also try to test above 300 megahertz, but you might not get uh, as good accuracy. Uh, and yet also on this, this case, it also says 0.9 gigahertz to 1.5, so that's interesting. Uh, the power, uh, it looks like you can use a 5 volt USB, and it looks like we have the serial number there and uh, the website. So it looks like we uh, got some cables in here. And this right here is more than likely a okay so this is a USB cable so you can control the device via the touch screen and that's a USB type C that's awesome those cables are actually a little expensive uh, because those are new for the newer cell phones too so you can actually control this device from a PC instead of using a touch screen uh, so I would assume that this cable right here is both for PC control and um, uh, charging the device as well because it does come with a power bank and here, uh, of course, we have some uh, SMA cables. Looks like uh, that's attached to maybe like a dummy, a little dummy load. Or uh, actually, uh, probably a calibration instrument, instrument. So to actually calibrate the antenna analyzer, that's probably what we have to do. I'll take a look at that in a second. And this is just a basic SMA connector, uh, and I'll have to see which antennas are compatible with that. And it looks like here is the device itself. So, the Nano BNA, of course, the very tiny handheld vector network analyzer. Uh, it looks like there's, this is probably a layout for different LEDs for different things going on here. This right here is some type of wheel. I would assume maybe that changes the frequency it's checking. We'll figure that out. Here's the switch, I guess that would be the on switch. There would be more than likely the charging port or the USB control port. And this right here looks like it's the front of the device. So, of course right here we have our SMA uh, connectors. These right here, it looks like maybe those are just to keep the port safe. We'll figure that out. I'm gonna pop this thing open and I may try to uh, analyze one or two antennas here for, uh, for the video. So let me see if I can switch it on. So it does come on, and it looks like we do have uh, some feedback on the screen. It looks like I already have full battery, so I don't really have to mess around with uh, trying to figure out the battery too much. Well, let's try this switch here. Yeah, so this right here, this little switch here, it looks like it moves around uh, the tool and once again, we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to pop open the instruction manual to see exactly how to use this thing, because there is a touch screen too, so that makes it a little more complicated. So let's uh, let's figure this out real quick. All right. So after a quick YouTube video, I've learned how to calibrate this thing. So let's go ahead and turn it on. 
and I'll open up the menu here. And we're going to go down to Cal and Calibrate. And so you'll see I have uh, three loads here uh, and I'll go through each of them. So this one right here is pretty much open. There's not, there's not even a pin in it. So I'm going to go ahead and screw that in. And I'm going to hit the button. And so the next one is going to be short. So that's just going to be the one here with the pin in it. I'm going to go ahead and screw that on. And boom. Boom. There we go. And for the last one will be the one with the load on it. The buttons aren't super super responsive, as you can see. There we go. So there's the load. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to done. And we're gonna go to save zero because you can save different calibrations. All right, so now that we're set up, I actually have an antenna connected. Uh, and this is going to be the first, the default antenna that came with my FT3D. So you can see the SWR here on the top left of the screen. I'm just going to go down to its bottom peak, which is where it's most resonant, which is at 120 with the antenna sideways. So if I prop it up and hold it like I would there with a handheld, you can see it quickly changed. Let's go back down there again. And it looks like we are resonant best resonant right now about uh, a 2 SWR at 145 megahertz. If we go on down it's about 1 to 1 5 at 140 so it's pretty resonant there. Uh, let's move up to uh, the 70 centimeter band and see where we're at. So about 445 we are about 1 to 3 SWR and once again, with these antennas, just moving them around and playing with them uh, definitely changes those. But I am going to check the signal stick as well and see what that looks like while I'm playing with it. So let me connect this here to the signal stick and see where it's going to shine at. So again, these handy, uh, these HT antennas are a little more difficult uh, to measure because there's so many more different variables at play here. But let's take a look and see what she said. Once again, I'm gonna try to hold it just pretty much like I would at HT as much as possible. So we'll go ahead and look at 445. It looks like it's one to two, so it looks like it's a little lower at this angle anyways. Uh, and let's go check out the 146. So at 145, I'm looking at a one to two SWR as well uh, without uh, having it screwed onto uh, the bow thing, so that's a pretty good deal. One one to eight, something like that. So yeah, this is a pretty cool little tool. All right, so it looks like I got to get playing with this thing and start measuring antennas around the house, and hopefully when I get some more pulls, I can start creating the antennas. So I hope you guys enjoyed the unboxing video. Uh, I recommend you get one of these if you're on a budget and you don't have an antenna analyzer because for $50 you get quite a bit of uh, stuff and functionality in there. SWR is just the little piece of uh, what you can do with this equipment. So I have some experiment around to do and uh, maybe in a couple weeks I'll do a review and uh, tell everybody what I think of the product. But, so far, it looks pretty cool, and uh, thanks for watching the video. 73 to everyone, and stay safe out there.